In this video, we will learn what are custom hooks in React, why to use them, and how to create them from scratch. So, I have created a React application using VJS. If you're not aware of VJS, you can check out the link video to learn all about it. I have created some routes using React Router DOM library, as you can see here. I have also installed Axios library so we can make API calls. So by default, we're displaying posts component when we access the application. And for the slash albums route, I'm displaying albums component. As you can see, this is the application. While the posts are loading, we're showing loading message and then the actual posts coming from the API. And when I click on albums, you see loading in the list of albums. So we can switch between routes and see the list of posts and albums. And for the API, we're using JSON placeholder API. Here, we have list of posts which we're displaying. And this is the API for getting the list of albums. Now, let's check out the component code so you will understand why and how to create custom hooks. In this posts component, I have declared three states, one for storing the posts array, another for storing the loading state, and third state for storing error state. In the use effect hook, I have declared get posts function where I'm making API call to that posts API. Before making the API call, I'm setting loading to true, error to false, and once we have the data available, I'm setting the post state with the data from the API. And if the loading is true, I'm displaying loading message. If there is error, I'm displaying something went wrong error message. To trigger that error message, for now, we can mistype the URL and you will see the error message on the screen. And if I correct the URL, you will see the posts again. And once we have the posts data available, I'm displaying each post using a ray map method. This exact same code we have for albums component also. We have the same three states declared, use effect hook with the API call. Everything is same, only the API URL is different. For the display part, we're displaying ID, user ID and title only. So posts component has extra body property which albums component don't have. As you can see, we have same repetitive code in both the posts and albums component with three states in use effect hook. If you're writing the same repetitive code in the application, then your final application bundle size will increase and it will slow down your application during load time. So if you have some code that you're reusing multiple times, then it's a good candidate for creating a custom hook. So this similar code we're using in posts component also, so instead of repeating the code, we can create a custom hook. A custom hook has the same functionality of a component, so you can use state, use effect hook, event handler functions inside custom hook. So custom hook is a function, which you can create to separate out some logic of your component to be reused and make your component more manageable. So let me create a new folder with name custom hooks, where we will store all our custom hooks. And let's create usefetch.js file inside it. It's a common convention to call the hook starting with use keyword, just like use state, use effect, we can call it use fetch to indicate that it's some kind of hook. So we can create this as a function and we can export it as named export. Now, from posts component, I can cut out this entire code and paste it in the custom hook. Now, we can import use state hook, use effect hook, and also Axios package. As we will be using this same hook for posts and albums, let's call it data instead of posts. Let's rename the function get data instead of get posts. Now here, instead of the hard-coded URL, we can accept the URL as a parameter for this hook. And we can use that URL here. 
And now, inside the posts component, we can call that useFetch hook, and we will pass the URL as an argument. From this hook now, I can return whatever data the component will be using. So from the custom hook, you can return an array or an object. It's up to you what to return. I will return an object here. So what we want to return from this hook? In the posts component, we need the posts, which is actual data. Then we also need is loading and is error. So let's return these things in an object. Now I can use them in the posts component. So I will use destructuring syntax to get those values from the hook. So this useFetch hook is returning an object, and we're destructuring that object here. Now, as we're using posts as the name for the array map method, I will rename the data property to posts. If you don't want to rename, you can directly use the data property instead of using posts. but I will rename it to posts to explicitly indicate that these are posts. Now, let's verify the changes. So if we click on posts, you can see it still works without any issue. So if I mistype the URL of the posts, we should see the error. So the error is also correctly getting displayed. And if I fix the error, we should see the posts again, and it's working as expected. So this is how, using custom hook, we can remove the repetitive code of component. If you have worked with React Query or SWR, you might see this code similar to the useQuery hook. So learning how to create custom hooks is very important as a React developer to write better React code. Now, we can reuse this hook inside the album's component. Here, instead of posts, it will be albums and we can remove this code. Now I can rename data to albums. And let's remove the unused imports. Let's also import the useFetch hook. Now you can see, albums are correctly getting displayed. If I enter wrong API URL, you can see, error is getting displayed, which is as expected. So this is how you can separate out some code from your component to keep the component dry and avoid repetitive code. Also, in addition to state, use effect, you can also define functions inside this custom hook and export it from the hook, so components can call that function to do something. So you can do that also in the custom hook, if required. Most of beginner React developers don't understand that when you use any custom hook in a component, then that hook is specific to that component. So all the states and data declared in this hook is separate for this component and any other component where this custom hook is used. So the albums component and posts component has a separate instance of this custom hook, so data is also different and is not shared across all the component using that hook. To demonstrate what I mean, I have created this static list of products in this file. And I have also created products.jsx file where we're displaying those products. So to see it on the screen, let me add a link in the header for products root. and I will declare slash products root in the list of roots. Now, if you check the application, you can see the products link in the header, and you will see the list of products when clicked on that link. And for each product, I have added add to cart and remove from cart button. In products component, I'm using use cart hook. And in this hook, I have declared state to store the products added to the cart. I have also added add product function 
where we're adding a particular product in the already added cart products using spread operator. We also have remove product function to remove a particular product from the cart by passing the ID of the product. And then we're returning these functions and cart from this hook. Now, let's log the cart content in the products component. As you can see, initially the cart is empty. And if I click on the add to cart button, you can see that product is added in the cart array. If I add another product to the cart, you can see we have two products in the cart now. So the use cart hook we're using in products component for now. As you might have seen on e-commerce websites, we also show cart icon in the header with the count of how many items added in the cart. Right now, I'm displaying the count of products added in the cart in the products component. Now, let's say in the header also, I want to display that count. So I will use the same use cart hook. I will remove these functions as I just want the cart count to be displayed. Let me add an extra div to display that count information. Now, you can see, at both the places, the count is zero. So, if I click on add to cart button, you can see the count is changed only here, and in the header it remains zero. If I add another product, you can see, cart has two items, but in header it's still showing zero value. So I'm using the same use cart hook and we're using the same cart state to find out the count of items added in the cart. But why in the header the count is zero? In the products component, we're using the same use cart hook where it's displaying the correct count. So let me also print the cart length separately in the products component. Let me comment out the strict mode, so you will see only one console log, instead of two because in React 18 with strict mode, the log will be printed twice. So initially, we have zero items in the cart. And if I click add to cart button, the count will increase by one. If I add more products, you can see the count increased each time I add the product. But the count in header is still zero and it's not changing. So in the header component, I'm using same use cart hook, but still the cart count is not changing. This is because whenever we use any custom hook in component, it creates a separate instance specific for that component. And the data in that custom hook will be separate for each of the component where we're using that hook. So not understanding this is a common mistake made by beginner React developers. So to fix this, instead of using same hook in each component, you should use that hook in the parent component and pass that hook as a prop or using React Context API to those components. So we will add that hook in app component which is a parent of all the components. Now, I can pass the cart and the methods as a prop to the products component. In the products component now, I can destructure those props and I will remove the use cart hook from this component. And in the header component also, we need cart information. But we don't need to pass entire cart here as we're just printing the cart length. So always pass only the required information as a prop to any component. So if you pass extra unnecessary information to any component, it might slow down your application. So always pass props that are required. So we will only pass cart length instead of entire cart. And while passing prop to header, we will just pass cart.length. So now, 
we're only using single use cart custom hook and which is used by header and products component. So now both the components will share the same instance of the custom hook. So initially we have zero items in the cart. And as we add products to the cart, the same count is correctly getting displayed in both the places now. So that's it about this video. I hope you learned something new from this video. If you found this video useful, do like it and don't forget to subscribe to the channel.